Hello and welcome to Math 141 Online. I'm David Lippman and I'm going to be your instructor this quarter. And this video is just going to introduce you to the course and give you some idea what to expect. Uh, so when you log in, uh, after you've gotten registered, you should see a page like this when you first log in. Uh, I encourage you your very first time to go ahead and click on your name. Make sure your email address is accurate so I have a way to contact you. And also, scroll down and take a look at this thing that says uh, time zone. If you're in the northwest, if you're in the Lakewood area, uh, you should be seeing uh, the Los Angeles Pacific time zone. If your computer is set for, say, Japan time, then all the dates are going to display wrong. So you might want to change your computer to be in the Pacific time zone so that you see the due dates correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and click into the course here. Um, you're going to see at first a welcome message to sort of giving you some idea how to get started in the course. Uh, and this might, this will be updated throughout the quarter uh, for each week, announcements and things like that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click into the do this first, which is probably what you've already done since you're watching the welcome video right now. Your next step is going to be to read the syllabus. You're going to want to read that very carefully to make sure you understand all the requirements for the course and how everything's going to work. Uh, and once you've read the syllabus, then you can take the syllabus quiz to show that you have read the syllabus. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is post your bio. Uh, so you'll click here, you'll, s you'll click add new thread, and then you can say something like about David Lippmann. Hi, and write up a little bit about yourself, hit post thread, and that will post up um, into the discussion forum uh, a little bit of information about yourself so that we can get to know each other. Uh, after that, you'll see an intro to WAMAP assignment. This is an assignment that will give you some uh, introduction to how to enter answers into WAMAP. It's a little different than Canvas if you've used Canvas before because WAMAP is designed to handle algebraic answers and mathematical answers. Uh, and so uh, things will be a little different. I'll show you more in a minute looking at an actual homework assignment. Uh, and that's the Do This First folder. Notice you can navigate around up here. Uh, next, you're going to want to look in the course info. Here you'll actually find the syllabus itself. Again, this has all the details on the course and all the course policies and requirements. Uh, there's a link here to the book. Uh, the book is available for free in PDF form. Uh, if you want to load it onto an iPad or other e-reader, uh, it's also available in the bookstore or via Amazon if you prefer a hard copy. Uh, our normal weeks are going to run Tuesday through Monday, um, but there will be due dates throughout the week, uh, with the end of the week, the quiz, being due on, on Monday. Uh, assignments will always be due at midnight Pacific time, uh, so if it shows up something different, again, check your time zone. Assignments will always be due at midnight Pacific time. All right, so that's sort of how you the basic info. Now let's actually take a look at what you're going to be doing. So let's click into week one. Now every week you're going to see a discussion forum. This is somewhere where if you have questions, you can ask your questions. Um, there will be a uh, sort of a here's the really important thing that you want to make sure that you uh, that you understand coming out of the week. This first week there's a little bit of information on how to work through the week, and then you'll see. Um, typically two to three sections of text material uh, and then a quiz. So for each of these text sections, we can click it to expand it. Uh, there'll be a link to the text for that section. Again, if you have the physical book, you can just read it that way. This is just another way to get access to it. Um, you'll see a set of uh, overview videos. So these are video lessons that cover a lot of, but not necessarily everything that is in the text. So you really want to use these to supplement the text, not replace it. Uh, but these are overview videos, give you big picture. Um, you can click that little plus sign there to expand it and watch it right here. Um, and you can go through those. Again, you don't have to watch them. They're there as a supplement or alternative or, or um, you know, supplement, yeah, something to work with the textbook in providing uh, your learning experience. Okay, and then once you've read the book and watched the videos, then you'll come down and click on the 
uh, homework itself. Now, so these si assignments are exercises. These are practice. Um, and so you'll see a question, and let's click down uh, to... Here's one. So, he, so here example is an example of a question where we need to put in a uh, numeric answer. Uh, so we can just type in our answer. Now, the way that homework questions will work is uh, you'll try the question. If you get it wrong, like here we got it wrong, you'll have a second attempt to try to get it correct. That way you can see like, oh, I forgot a negative, or oops, I misread something. Uh, if you miss it again, though, it, it's going to go ahead and show you the answer. So this is kind of like looking in the back of the book, seeing what the answer is, um, and and hopefully maybe this will help you figure out what you did wrong. Now, if not, and watching the video, I don't know if you noticed that, but there was a uh, video uh, help available there. Um, again, try the problem on your own first, but if you're having trouble, watch the video, um, and it. If after watching the video and looking back at the book, you still can't figure out what's going wrong with the problem, go ahead and click this post this question to forum link. And what that'll do is it'll take your your version of the question. Just so you know, every ver student gets a slightly different version of the, these questions. Uh, it'll take your version and it'll allow you to post into the just questions forum about the question. Now, really important here, don't just click post thread with with just the question there because I'm going to have no idea what the issue is. I'm just going to see this question. I'm going to be like, well, why didn't they watch the video? Um, so try to expl try to provide something here about what difficulty you're having. So tr say something like, I'm not understanding why blah, blah, blah. Right? Give some details about what issue you're having here and that'll help me help you. Because without that, I'm not going to have any idea what your what your issue is, and I'm very likely to respond with a, what, what problem are you having? And then it's going to take longer for you to get help. Okay, so after you try a problem, again, if you miss it a couple times or you miss it once, uh, you may have noticed that I then click this Try Another Similar Question link. Now, if you do that, it's going to generate a new version of the question for you. So new graph, in this case, new numbers. And on the homework, you can now rework the problem for full credit. So you can always redo the problems for full credit on the homework. So there's no reason, if you put in the time and effort, to not get 100% on your homework. You can always do it, the homework, up until the due date, you can keep on redoing the homework and getting full credit on it. Okay, so the, the homework is never a, oops, I missed it, oh well, I'm done. Uh, you can always keep on working on it like that. Now, in some questions, you're going to need to put in an algebraic answer or maybe an ex a fraction like two-thirds or, or some other type of expression. In those types of questions, you're typically going to see this preview button. And there's two ways to enter your answer. One is using uh, sort of standard calculator style notation. So you could do like, 2 slash 3, and the computer is going to interpret that as 2 thirds. Uh, and uh, for like an exponent, you could do like x caret 2, so x squared, and it will interpret that. Now, that can be a little bit challenging if you're not used to that, and so your best friend is going to be this little yellow up arrow here. Uh, if you click that, it's going to pop open the equation editor, M MathQuill. Uh, and this you can use to uh, to type in your answers uh, sort of point and click wise. So like, I need a fraction and I need two thirds x to the power squared. Um, by the way, kind of handy here if you're using a keyboard, if you're like up in the exponent and you need to get out of it, hit the right arrow and it will bring you down out of the exponent plus one. Um, and then once you're done entering your answer, you can click save and it notice that it just converts it into the uh, into calculator style notation here, uh, and and that way you can type in your answer more easily. Now, if you see this syntax error, that means there's something wrong here in in how you entered your answer. Uh, in this case, it looks like the problem is expecting our variable to be t, and so an x is not a valid 
variable in that case. And notice now it says syntax OK. Now syntax OK doesn't mean our answer is right, it just means that it understands our answer and we're OK to go now. All right, so that's how homework works. Uh, and then, uh, so you will work through the homework for each of the sections. And then once you're done with those, at the end of the week, you will take a quiz. The quiz will cover material from those sections of that week. Now, the quizzes are a little different. First off, they're timed. Now, that you have 90 minutes, uh, which is going to be more than you need. The quizzes should only take about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, but uh, I, w I didn't want... The timer doesn't pause if you leave the quiz, so if you have an internet issue or something like that, I wanted to make sure you'd have time to log back in and things like that. Um, on the quizzes, you'll have three tries at each problem, but there'll be a small penalty for each missed. There is no, none of those try similar problems options. So this is, the quiz is intended to be the, now demonstrate that you can do this uh, sort of the first time or first or second time uh, that you really understand the material now. Now each week, uh, there's going to be one or two questions from the quiz that I'm going to ask you to send your work for. Uh, and there's uh, some help here on how to do that. And the idea here is that uh, because the midterm and final are paper and pencil tests, uh, I want to make sure that you are writing your mathematics correctly. And so by sending me your work, I can verify that you are uh, doing the appropriate work on paper so that you can earn full credit on your midterm and final. Uh, as long as you send me your work, you get five extra points. So consider those basically free points, uh, and, and that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Now, a couple other things. Um, it just in, in WAMAP, uh, to orient you, something that you may find fairly helpful is the calendar. If you click on the calendar, it's going to show you these little question marks, show you when things are due. Or I may change those to actually say homework and quiz. Um, so notice, like, for the first week, uh, we have one assignment due on Friday, and then um, a bunch of assignments due on Monday. I think I intended one of these to be due on Sunday, or Saturday or Sunday. Anyway, I may change those a bit. But, uh, and then notice we have an assignment due on Wednesday and Friday, and that way you can keep track of when the assignments are due. Um, the assignments are staggered throughout the week in order to um, sort of keep you on track. I used to have all the assignments due at the end of the week, and people put everything off to the last minute, and they didn't have time to ask questions. So uh, at this now I'm going to start staggering the due dates. If you are somebody who can only do their work on the weekend, then you're going to want to work ahead on the weekend and get those uh, Wednesday and Friday assignments done ahead of time on Sunday. I'll always keep an the next week open uh, a week ahead so that you can do that. So the calendar will be helpful for keeping track of the due dates. Um, and then uh, also handy is the grade book. The grade book is uh, going to let you see that your score on all the assignments uh, and then your, your totals for the class. Generally, this one, the past due, is going to be the total that you're going to want to look at. That's the one that only includes assignments whose due dates have passed. Uh, this other one includes all the current assignments as well, which you may not have done yet. So generally, you'll want to look at this past due. Uh, date to get some idea what your overall score in the class is. Alrighty, so I hope, hopefully that will give you an idea of how the class is going to operate. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and post them uh, in one of the forums, and I'm looking forward to a great quarter together.